Hey, hello everybody and welcome back to Wobbleville and I guess we're heading out to the final frontier here we've got ourselves actually a couple of Blackheart models busts it will we'll go over some things actually I have to dig out some other busts actually let me see if I can do that here while we're actually waiting for folks to come in like our moderator and such here but we have a whole bunch of other busts sitting around here let's uh, let's grab some of our other ones that I completely forgot about here that we could actually show you while we're doing stuff here. Let me see if I got a, I got another dragon one right here. I'll just grab these two. I didn't have time to do pictures of them all. Hey, Armored Wolf, how you doing? So there's a couple of Blackheart dragons right there from the Song of Ice and Fire. I'm just going to put some other things away here and just make, again, some room for these two gents. And there is another, there's another bust that I'll see if I can drag out at a certain point here too but tonight we got these two we'll focus on the uhuru because i mean we got references there again these are from blackheart models so that uh i thought that logo actually also had the name it uh, doesn't seem to then this one is the angelique bust and i thought if we get to this one we could maybe use our either our interference powders or interference paints but i I do think that is this one right there. That now that's the half life size bus version. <laughs> that is uh that is ginormous right there. Everyone remembers the Caracolila bus that we painted a while back. And that was the I think it's the Reign of Fire Dragon right there. Still gotta do Smaug. Still have to do Smaug. And then I just uh, realized I never had a picture of this one. So yes, now we got the picture of this thing here. That is the one half life size species bust. There is actually a video for that on the YouTube channel. I completely forgot about that. I thought I only painted that at Gen Con, but uh, no, there's also a video on YouTube. Actually, did it mostly with the airbrush. Here, not so much with the airbrush. We started off Stino Res Primer, and I just brushed it on. Just brushed this on both of them. I just brushed it on. I just, for whatever reason, I think maybe my. Uh, my airbrush booth is maybe shot or something like that. You have to scoop it out or something like that. Hey, Megan, how you doing? And Sammy Poo, welcome back. Now, over I <laughs> almost used a pin to uh, point out the colors on the palette. So on the palette, we got the usuals up here. You got your your white, your brilliant yellow pale, chamomile light, chamomile deep, terra rosa, fanchion red. Now here is the usuals. Van Dyke Brown, Indigo, Umber Black. Now, this is that black, that Spurling Black, or no, sorry, Black Spinel, yes. This is the Perline Black. We keep combining these two together. This is the Perline Black. Not sure just how much of these we'll use, but it could be fun. We also have Prussian Blue. We have Esfaltum here. Remember, we were talking about that as possible uh, skin tones and such. Hey, Queez. So, Queez, your space puppies were looking really good. I saw your picture earlier today. And here on the wild side, we actually have our Silva Conacanol Magenta. We also have an Egyptian Violet and the Purple Matter. Just in case we get to maybe do a space cape here on the on these plinths. I don't know if we'll get to. I don't know if we'll get to, but we'll give it a shot. So yeah, Queez, that was looking really good. How you doing there, Grumdy? And Landrast. Yeah, Landrast, sorry about the Boy, it looked like, was it two pieces that failed, or was it uh, was it three I, I could clearly see it looked like two pieces had at least failed. So, sorry sorry to see that there. Hey, Zeke, nice to see you. Uh, and Shadow Morn, how are you doing tonight? Uh, hopefully, this is Monday, right? Yeah, I think it's Monday. Hopefully, uh, everybody's Monday wasn't too, uh, wasn't too crazy. Oh, uh, apparently I forgot the earrings in here. So yeah, there's uh, we don't have the earrings in here. Uh, I guess I'll get to those at some point. I don't remember where the heck they went. So let's uh, let's see if they're in the bag here somewhere. No, I don't see them in the bag either. So <laughs> maybe I just lost them. I don't know because I just noticed there was holes in the ears with no earrings. But that's okay. That's okay, right? That's okay. How are you doing there, Aunt Bantha? Welcome in. Now again, we've got the. We've got the Angelique bust here too, and I was thinking, well, especially with this, use the interference powders if we get to it. If we get to that, uh, ripped off the supports and several other pieces. Of partial support failure. 
And Landress, that was all from Lost Kingdoms, right? And you've been printing lots of stuff. That Did you change the resin or something like that, I guess, maybe? All right, what we're going to do first, yeah, let's uh, let's just get our pre-glazes in here. And we're going to do a little combo of a couple of things here. How's about this s -fultum? You've been talking about this for a while for skin tones. Talking about this for a while. Oh, let's see. Yeah, Sammy Poo, I just, uh, actually, let's get a little of uh, Van Dyke Brown in here, too. I just don't know, uh, I probably just opened up the bag and they fell out or something like that, because uh, I swear that Kathy has one, too, and hers has earrings. So I guess we'll just have to make some, because I don't think this one uh, has them in there. Yeah, Megan, that is, uh, let's, let's see, we just uh, show that right, uh, there we go. So there's the half life-size bust there. We did that one at Gen Con, and actually there we were using the, oh gosh, the Metal Smith paint, which literally is just the metallic primer mixed with the, 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 the what were they, not contrast paints, the, whatever it is from Badger, the, uh, Boy, it's been a long time since I last used those. I forget. Uh, Armored Wolf probably remembers. I don't. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I just don't care anymore. Uh, oh, hi. Okay. Uh, Highlands Miniatures. Okay, I'm glad it was a different company because uh, Landress, the supports look different. Or the, the platforms look different. Ghost Tents. Thanks, Armored Wolf. Uh, now, this is the first time I'm going to also get a chance to see... The Spinel Black in action here. So that's that's what we're putting here. I just want to see what would happen. Ooh, you know what? A little indigo in there, too. So thanks, Armored Wolf. Yeah, I'm just like, whatever. Boy, this actually has a little bit of green to it. It has more green than I expected. Now, the, the thing about the Spinel is that it's supposed to be opaque and matte, which is not usually what... Neither of those things usually qualifies to any color that is black, so that's going to be interesting. Very interesting. So yeah, thanks Armored Wolf for the little bit of a recall there. I couldn't, I, ne I never would have remembered. I'm trying to think. The last time I used those was probably last Gen Con. Yeah, I think that's the last time I even touched those things. No wonder I didn't remember. Gosh. Yeah, I think either the airbrush booth has to be completely vacuumed out or it's just shot and I just need to get another one because it is, uh, it's basically spitting stuff out instead of sucking stuff in there. So that's why these were primed by hand. Hey, Dio, how are you doing? Oh, the platforms were added in Litchi. Uh, make scraping them off the plate. Oh, okay, Landress, that's, I was noticing that. I'd never seen... Well, maybe the Monster Mayhem Monthly or whatever, maybe they have platforms like that, but I had never really seen platforms quite like that. Here, let's just keep going with this indigo right there. Yeah, Dio, it, uh, well, this is already, we, we've painted two of these already. I mean, come on, we're, we're eight minutes in. You, you seriously don't think this is the first bus we started eight minutes in? I mean, come on. What the heck, man? This here's Wampleville. Eight minutes to get something done. Yeah, we don't we don't screw around like that. That's amateur hour, baby. So that's okay. I hope that you're doing good, and I hope everybody else is doing okay, and that your Monday didn't have too much Monday in it. We say that all the time, every single Monday, hoping that people's Monday was all right. You know what we're gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> so here's my talk about actual green. This has actual green in it right here. This is the Perline Black. Can't resist. Got to give it a shot here. Just for funsies. And then back to the Spinel. And then we'll do a little bit of a wipe away with our sponges too. Yeah, or, or object in, in, in camera is closer than it appears. <laughs> There we go. So I really don't care what color is fixed where it doesn't matter to me. Um, there's no layers in oil painting anyways. 
So let's make this nice and messy, because it's got to be messy before it can be neat. All right, as far as the uniform here, let's just uh, get a little bit of our spinel here. And then we'll grab probably our fanchion red and hit the hit the rest of this. Uh, what is it? Uh, the, is that the angels, right? The, and Doctor Who, is it the angels, the weeping angels or something like that? You, you can't blink because if you blink, they move too fast or something like that. All right, where's their fanchion red? There it is. And it's also, guess what? It's got a little bit of the black in there too. Little bit of that black in there. Let it all mix together. What the heck? Might even let a little bit of that get into our skin tone over here. Maybe a little more of the fanchion red up here. Hello, little harmon. Spark my ganja. Uh, thank you so much, Lelico Simar. I appreciate the hello, little hobbits. They keep getting bigger and bigger. He's like, get out of here, old man. You smell funny. But they keep getting bigger. I tell you, every time Gandalf keeps showing up here, everything that's being painted just keep is literally bigger and bigger and bigger. Gandalf has no clue what's going on. Gosh, what's he going to do when he sees this? Speaking of Blackheart models, actually, you can go back. I'm pretty sure we painted this one. Did we paint this on the YouTube channel or do we paint it here? <clears throat> I don't know if we painted that here or not. I think the Vizirian... I think we painted that one on the YouTube channel, maybe? I don't know, but they're on the YouTube channel. That I do know. They are actually on the YouTube channel. Hey, Valfira, how you doing? Uh, oh, yeah, actually, too. Uh, just as soon as we get this red up to the shoulder here, we did... Actually, that's rendering right now. So I filmed Episode 5 of Series 24 the latest army painting series and that is now well that's that's rendering now after we're done here tonight that's going to be going up on to well that'll get uploaded and then it'll be on the patreon page so so velfera how you doing hey nessie and uh, there you go nessie so there it is episode five we completed the unit there's what it looks like there you go. That was our, our first foray into multi-basing. And that is the latest series on the Patreon page. That's uh, part of our army painting series. Yes, it is. So I'm going to keep working here with this uh, black spinel. Not really going to go crazy with putting too much of it on here. Also letting some of the red maintain its presence there too. Because we're probably going to be sticking our hands onto this an awful lot. So no point in getting a whole bunch of paint here that's just going to get wiped off anyway. I'm even going to let some of that. Wow, that perline black. That's intense stuff. Yeah, that wasn't the black spinel. That's the perline black. And that's got, hey, uh, actually, Nessie, this is, uh, so we're basically taking this black spinel here, or the, the perline black, letting it mix with the red a little bit. Boy, I think this would be a good Dark Angel color, potentially, like for really dark Dark Angel stuff going on. Yeah, this Perlene Black, it's not expensive. It's not expensive. At least I don't think it was. But it is very intense. Uh, hey, Nosferatu, how you doing? The folks, be sure to also give Nessie Nose and Nosferatu a follow because they're fellow Twitch streamers and they... Paint all kinds of cool stuff. So Nosferatu, did you? Did, uh, how has the? Are they calling it Armada, the the new Mantic uh, fleet game there? I think they're calling it Armada. Didn't you have about four different fleets or so? Yeah, <laughs> boy, Landrest. Uh, yeah, when I when I saw those, I thought those are I don't recognize those platforms. For some reason, I thought you were printing out Lost Kingdom stuff, and I didn't quite remember those platforms. Now, of course, having never used Lychee or Lychee or whatever it's called, not super familiar with their just their regular platforms look like. 
Now here, this just does not have any thinner in it pretty much at all. Well, there's a little bit. I just put a couple of drops on there before we got started. All right. And we'll just let that, again, we'll just let that darker stuff mix in with our reds here. We got plenty of sponges. Let's start to sponge here. Let's get this some sponge in. Uh, Mantic announced Flyers, Magic, and Four Fleets for this year and more minis. So it sounds like Mantic is going all in on that. And I hope it's really fun for you, too. Ah, see, that's the S. Fultum. That's just the S. Fultum by itself. That That's uh, obviously there's no... There's no opaque color added to that. That is just S. Fultum all by itself. Very interesting. Get some of this pulled away over here. Okay, just using our same old makeup sponges, nothing special. Uh, let's see, for some reason when they supported these, they used rafts that are completely flat with right angles. Yeah, that, that doesn't sound... That does sound like it could be a pain right there. Uh, let me see. So I think we're all caught up. Hey, Oliver. No, we're not caught up. We we have to welcome in Oliver Ghost. Oliver, how you doing? So again, these are from Blackheart Models. And yes, I forgot the earrings. We'll put those in some other time. Well, actually, I don't know where they are. I didn't actually see them in the package. They could be laying around on the floor somewhere, but I did not see those. Now we're going to take some of this away. This is the that spinel black. And the primer is nothing fancy. I should just probably keep this out here. So this is just Steinol Res primer. I just brushed it on. What is it, light flush? Yeah. I brushed it on because I think the spray booth, either in, this is in its last legs or it just needs to be like completely vacuumed out or something. Because even a brand new filter does absolutely nothing with it. Uh, Oliver Ghost has been able to do a lot of painting lately. That is good. Uh, well, that's always good. I mean, heh, nothing bad there. That is always good to see. So we're just going to keep wiping some of this away. How much of the red are we going to wipe away? Not sure yet. I'm just going to pour out some more of these because it was just too difficult getting at a couple of them. Now, see the Fanchon Red? I'm almost... You could almost call Fanchon Red a staining color. In fact, I think we could label, label it at least semi-staining, if not uh, completely stained. So I think Fanchon Red is another one of those in that rare, that rarefied air of staining colors. Yeah, I think so. And again, these are from Black Heart Models. Of course, I thought the logo had the name in it the logo does not so i apologize for that these are the micro mania bus i think that's what they call them hey tiny tusk nice to see you again yeah so that that fanchon red does wow that actually that's got more adherence even than i was expecting impressive okay and then we'll do our usual. Well, actually, we're going to take a little different tack on this. We're take a little different tack here. We might be doing a lot more dry brushing, maybe, of darker colors before we start doing the light colors than maybe you're used to saying here. And there is your link provided, of course, by Armored Wolf. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yep, Armored Wolf, sorry that the brain is, uh, well, <laughs> there's pretty much nothing left of it. It's just... Uh, this is what your brain is on no sleep. So just uh, just think, if you want to have a dysfunctional brain like this, just like don't sleep for 15 and a half years or so. That should be just fantastic. Let's make sure we don't have too much of the S. Fultum sitting there. Just about there. Okay, that was all of 19 minutes. Yes, uh, Tiny Tusk, we like to say that sleep is overrated. Sleep is also for, well, 
it's a barbaric custom. I mean, it's completely inefficient. You get nothing done. And I mean, like, nothing done. You drool a lot. I mean, uh, to me, there's uh, there's no upside. There is no upside at all. Now we're taking a little bit of our tiny bit of our brilliant yellow pale, as opposed to the well, we usually would just take brilliant yellow pale by itself. Here we're doing a little bit of this, and we're gonna. This is our one true brush here, and now we're gonna just start to put in something that's a little bit more opaque here, a little less yellow. But you notice, it's still a dry brush. So I say the pre-glaze is always different. Depends on what you're working on. There's every miniature, every bust, every vehicle, everything is always going to be a little bit different. So why would you just take the same approach to everything? You have to sometimes make those modifications. Oliver Ghost uh, noticed that the... Organic pigments are much more staining than the inorganic pigments. Well, I guess then we'll have to... Uh, it'll be interesting that because there's not many staining colors. There's not many staining colors, so it shouldn't be too hard to track down the origin point of the pigments, right? I mean, you got your, your indigo. Well, now we're, we're adding fanchion red to that. I think we can also add the perlene black to it. Oh, thank you so much, Ollie Kettles, for that subscription. Ollie, how you doing? Nice to see you again. And let it drop right down in there. I uh, hope that you're doing okay. And thank you so much for that. Yeah, Oliver, uh, I'll try to... Because I'm starting to study, well, the history of the pigments more. And that was... And if you remember these, of course, I think all those... No, I do have them up here. I do have them up here. But, you know, some of these, these are some of the four new colors that we got. And then, of course, this one that I really loved here. This was a spectacular. Here, This was the printer's ink right here. So Oliver Ghost, it, it makes sense that maybe that one would have a more natural origin just being a printer's ink. And by printer's ink, I mean it goes back... Like printer's ink in the 1700s, 1800s, that sort of thing, I believe. Yeah, Oliver, this, uh, see, that's uh, that's pretty fun. And it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, when you think about it, <clears throat> just right off the top of your head, doesn't it kind of make sense a little bit? All right, I think we've gotten in here with a little bit more of an opacity type of a addition here also you notice i'm kind of grabbing some of the here color here dragging that down into the face but now not the face we have this brush right here now maybe we can go a little bit stronger here might throw a little bit of the umber into this and this is very much a dry brush here. And now that should mix nicely with what's there. Uh, I, I think maybe we'll go with a little bit of the Egyptian violet, perhaps on, on some of the eyeshadow types. Of, see, even that, I'm just going to reduce that profile of the brilliant yellow pale just a smidge there. Uh, let's see. Difficult to catch the streams due to the time difference. Uh, uh, oh, Ollie, thanks for catching up on the uh, on those highlights there. I have to say the, the those Saturday challenges. Oh boy, those those are really fun. I really enjoy the heck out of those. It's also a great way for me to get a bunch of the Lord of the Rings figures done, so that we can get that much closer to our battle reports. Hey, Caruz, nice to see you again. Well, I hope that you've had a, a good last couple of months. Oh, let's see. Oh, let's, I think we're all caught up. Yep, I think we're caught up now. But it doesn't really take long, does it? 
We're letting all this mix together nicely. And hey, we finally got a chance to use our asphaltum here and experiment with it as a skin tone. I think too, let's see, I've got the, let's see, Jackie Robinson, Jesse Owens, and Joe Lewis busts. What I might do is uh, do a couple of them as tutorial videos, and then we'll do one of them on a stream here. Because it's sort of a, uh, it's like a three bust little display thing. So all three of them are together. Now over here, before I go any further, I am going to just try and introduce a smidge of our Fanchon Red over here. And I mean ever so slightly. Just a little bit there. And then let's see what happens when our brilliant yellow pale hits the top of that. It should, uh, it should influence it a little bit. And sure enough, it does. There's a little bit of pink right there. Not a bunch, just a little, all I need. And of course, the, the beauty of this is that I can come back in here as many times as I need to. Let's say I want to, well, I don't know how much green I would be adding there, but maybe a little bit of violet, something like that. also want to make sure I get some reflected light in here. Let's not forget about this side. And again, we're going to allow some of that little smidge of fanchion red we threw in there have a little bit of influence on this. And I just, again, I, I found as many reference pictures as I could. Boy, where I can see a little bit of this is still in the skin tone, thank goodness. Because that's given just a little hint of a different color. That's nice. We'll lighten this up a smidge here. I, I know the last bust that I painted was the Eowyn bust. That was the one that I sculpted. So it's, it is a little bit weird painting uh, something that I haven't sculpted as far as busts go. I kind of got used to that a little bit. Hey, Deuce, nice to see you again. How you doing? Hopefully all goes well with the with the Space Marine projects there. I know you have you have a lot of experimental irons in the fire. Ah, uh, look at the, there we go. Yeah, just about there. Let's let some of this mix. Oh, what the heck? We'll go with a little more of the brilliant yellow pale here. Maybe even a smidge of that umber. I don't want to lighten up the neck too much because, I mean, it's sort of supposed to be in shadow anyways. Abacles there. I see this sort of tightened up the uniform here around the neck just because there wasn't as much space, obviously, uh, the way they have the, the format of their busts like this. And, of course, we'll... I don't know if we'll use, nah, we won't use, uh, I guess we could use, oh, we could use interference gold on that. <laughs> I just realized that. Not one more, one more jump pack on the kit bashed figs. That's got to feel good. Back again to our little smidge of that. Brilliant yellow pale. It's mixed mostly with the asphalt and a little bit of the little bit of umber in there too. I think we'll lighten up this side. Too. We don't want to go too light with that. Let's also I'm just gonna throw something here onto the eyes just to have something there. to know what, what light actually is so that we don't end up making the skin tone too light. It's actually, we got some blue in here. I, I thought I had this brush cleaned up. Apparently not as much as I thought. Let's see, I don't mind a little bit of my previous dark color mixing in there. 
I'm also gonna use maybe some Van Dyke Brown here for some eyebrow. Ah, what the heck? I'll throw a little bit of thinner in there. I was hoping to maybe not be doing that, but we'll just we'll add a little bit of thinner in there. Just to this is a pretty rough surface right here, so let's do that. And her eye, I'm gonna assume that the there's a little bit of dark brown in those eyes besides just the besides just the pupil there, so we'll also go with something like that probably. Now I was talking about introducing maybe a little bit of Egyptian violet along the way here, and I'm just looking for one of my one of these guys here. We got this Egyptian violet over here. Let's uh, make some use of that. What the heck? Give it just a little bit of a something there. Very much a dry brush, and that's a. Uh, it's like tinting. <laughs> It's a little bit of a tint almost there. You can darken these down and actually, yes, too, even the undersides of the eye here. Uh, Oliver Ghost, it's just the primer. So it's a typical resin bust right here. It's just we used our, uh, the airbrush spray booth is either on its last legs or it just needs to be completely vacuumed out or whatever, so I had to brush on the primer. That's the usual Steiner res right there. So all of the all of the black heart busts are made of resin. Now, this Angelique bust was a little bit different. This was actually metal pieces right here, the two parts of the crown or whatever, but that was a different type of resin right there. So yeah, definitely uh, they are definitely not made out of wood. That that I can attest to. Although it would be interesting to take the wood carving tools and try to carve a a bust out of wood. That would be an interesting little project right there. Also, what could be interesting? Ooh, I'm gonna take the. Well, here we are. We're gonna do spirulene black. We're mixing the black spinel. And we are also mixing, but not with that brush. We're going to grab ourselves one of these here. Uh, that uh, should be an interesting combination. Before we get any other paint up on there, I'm going to just use that as a place to stick my hand here. So that's going to give it a little bit of a greenish tone. And the the spinel is obviously that super opaque black, so should be interesting here. Uh, yep, Velfair, they all come with their own plinths. Now, some of them are a little, like, these These aren't necessarily the, the most handy plinths, so depending on the shape of some of these things right here. Uh, but they're 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 okay, and thank you so much, Jared. That is appreciated. So, folks, be sure to give Jared's terrain many a follow. Thank you so much for that sub. That is definitely appreciated because all of those subs and that sort of thing—that's what keeps all these crazy new colors out on the palette. And I'll I'll try and get some more. I have to do a couple of commission things. And then uh, then we'll try and get it. There's a couple of other colors that I have. I've been doing some research on. So hopefully we can try those out as well. I don't, okay, so there's not as much on that bottom. I'm going to go back over here to the Egyptian violet there. Oh, thank you so much, Jared. I appreciate that. And, and folks, be sure again to give Jared's terrain minis a follow. And Jared, uh, as always, you got any sort of work in progress type things you want to toss those into the chat, feel free so that folks can see what you got going. And well, and just tell them what you have, uh, what you've been doing also just on your regular painting. Hey, V. Ah, so fo another person that you need to go follow, folks. It's Flagger Dragon. Flagger Dragon paints. Flagger Dragon does 
Uh, very special piano streams. Hey, wait a minute. Aren't you two guys doing a uh, Jarrett and V? Aren't you guys doing a multi-stream coming up really soon? Isn't that is that next? Is that this week? I think you're doing that this week. Maybe Thursday. Ah, Jarrett is working on bards for bards, bard minis for charity. Yeah, Jarrett, if if uh, if there's a link or something like that, obviously to the chari charity or something. Yeah, we got. Post that to the chat there, too, so people can take a look at it and see what's going on there. Ah, so Thursday, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Actually, Kathy's going to get to see that then. Ah, V, that's a perfect time. I think it's uh, it's after all the early stuff that Kathy has to do and, what, a couple hours before her broadcast. So, yeah, I think Kathy's going to be able to join you. So, folks, be sure to, well, follow. <laughs> well, if you follow one of them, you'll get the alert maybe for the multi-stream. But if you follow both, that way you'll positively get the alert for the multi-stream that's coming up this Thursday, 1 p.m. Central Time. So I think we're starting to build this out pretty well here. And also, V does piano. Well, you guys are doing a music stream. Well, part of it is a music stream anyway, right? And, of course, you can also catch V on the Monster of the Week on uh, Sunday nights on Harlan's Heroes. Yeah. Now, do it. Oh, what the heck. I'm going to keep going. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of the indigo. A little bit of that indigo, and let's just darken up the hair here. When in doubt, make things darker. We're just going to darken stuff up. We are mixing it in with the spinel, so I think uh, you might you might see a lot less of the ivory black and a whole lot more of that black spinel. I, I think that's what you're going to see more and more and more. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think we're all caught up. So V is going to be getting a whole bunch of more uh, shark. So many shark minis uh, sh or sharks. Which is, I'm just trying to think. Well, how the heck would the phone auto correct to sh correct to shork? I mean, usually it's going to correct everything to like the most lame and obvious thing. Yeah, we'll just uh, we'll leave this little band of highlights. And there's we got a couple of things here. I would like to maybe have some light coming from the back here. Look at this reference in the left hand side. So. Maybe two bands kind of of highlight right there. Oh, so she did type uh, shorks, so big shorks. I I have I'm not familiar with shorks, so I'm, I'm a little ignorant. I am shork deficient, I guess. Don't uh, I've not heard of the shorks before. So V, I only got a chance to see just the very 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 tail end. Of the of the thing last night that was I guess that was quite the dramatic ending, and then comic relief was provided, as uh, there was the what did I miss, and then everybody went, are are you serious? You I think you pretty much all thought that he was just trolling the whole thing, right? That okay yeah he saw that he's just he's just messing with us, and he says no what, what did I miss? <laughs> At least I think that's how it went down. That that's what Kathy said. They because all of a sudden it went from you know everybody's practically in tears to all of a sudden there's people that are just maniacally laughing. And I went, okay, that's a quick turn of emotions right there. That that's a really quick turn of emotions. And and then I realized, oh well, okay, maybe uh maybe that's it. Because uh, I would certainly have thought that, well, yeah, he's just he's just messing with, you, he's just having some fun, but no, uh, he had stepped out, <laughs> stepped out of the room, and had no idea what was uh, what was going on. Uh, now, uh, so V was it one of his characters, or was it his his current character? Because I seem to remember. That that uh, Big Jim said something about, well, 
two of your friends were fighting with each other or something like that, or two of your friends were involved. As someone who's used to paint with a, a tiny tusk, that's what we're doing right now. That's what I've been doing most of this time. This has mostly been a dry brush. We're, we're doing it right now. We're literally doing a dry brush right now. See how dry that paint is? Now, doing oil dry brushing over wet paints is a little bit more tricky than, say, it might be with just your standard acrylics or whatever. But I do it all the time. So, tiny to, I know that you're definitely much newer here than all the grizzled veterans. But if you go back and check out especially some of the starting portions of the, the previous sessions, you'll see that the dry brush thing is something that is used all the time. That's what I was using mostly on her face there. Uh, the, the original character was fighting his current character. All right. Hey, Brandy, how are you doing? Nice to see you. And Bitron, how are you doing? Nice to see you back. So Bitron, I hope that uh, I hope that you don't feel bogged down in Gondor shields. I mean, they are just the shopping mall guards of Middle Earth, anyway. So yeah, you don't need to you don't need to f spend too much time on them. Here, let's uh, bring out some more darks here, and then I want to get some some blues in there. So we're gonna see some more of our well, we're gonna see some more of our dry brush in here. That's for sure. Oh, what the heck. I'll let just a smidge of the indigo get in there. And yep, that is very much a dry brush right there. And as you can see, we're just going to dry brush right there. However, it's different with the oils. Look at that. You see how the pre-glaze is mixing with it? That means we got to go over here. we got to get some fresh stuff. So if you're going to be dry brushing, the oil's wet over wet like this. You can get a couple of brush strokes. Now it's it's dark again, so we got to come back here to get some fresh stuff. Now, Indigo Montoya, uh, was it you killed my father, right? I think that's how it went. But yeah, we, we are so close to labeling this Indigo Green. That's it, because it does all the same stuff that Indigo Blue typically does but it's got that wonderful greenish tinge it also has a staining effect which is really cool you just don't see that all the time so again that was very much a dry brush but you can look at <laughs> that was the original color look at how much dark stuff worked its way in there hey perception how are you doing So the palette is nothing more than a sheet of parchment paper right here. It's actually the same stuff that I would use for my wet palette. And then we take a little bit of a glue stick there, and it's just a sheet of cardboard. So when we're done, we can just pull that right off of there, and then we're done. It, it absorbs a little bit of the linseed oil. Not much, because we don't really use much in the way of linseed oil anyways. So there's not a whole bunch to absorb. But it'll absorb a little. I mean, and the parchment paper itself is you know, naturally absorbent, too. So, D-Duty, how are you doing? And Zeke is uh, looking for the six-finger man. I'd, uh, I'm not familiar with that one, Zeke. So, for Brander, it is 2.17 in the morning. I am not surprised there. Not surprised there, Brander. I hope that you're doing well, and well, happy Tuesday morning to you. Uh, it's funny, 2.17 in the morning for me is just, well, midday. Might as well be 2.17 in the afternoon. It's more like that. All kidding aside, it is more like that. It really is just... Uh, well, these days, I'm usually getting to sleep somewhere around 6 or 6.30 in the morning. That's uh, not really the ideal choice, but it's just kind of how things have played out. Ah, 2.17 in the morning for Tiny Tusk. So, Tiny Tusk, thank you for so much for joining me at such a late hour. And hopefully we keep you entertained enough that you don't want to go to sleep. 
Yeah, this is very, really different. Not, not usually a painting sci-fi bus. So, and again, we've got a whole bunch of other things from Black Heart Models, and these are. I'm pretty sure these are on the YouTube channel. I know this Vizirian is. We've got, I think this is Drogon, maybe. This might be Drogon. And then we did paint the third one. I think we painted all three so far. And then, oh, we also have the, here it is. There it is. Oh, there's, a, oh, that's the half-size, uh, half-life-size species bust. But there we go. That is the Reign of Fire bust right there. So I think they did five dragons. They did the three Song of Ice and Fire dragons, and then they did Smaug, and then they did that. Uh, uh, the my my favorite of them all actually is the Reign of Fire dragon. That that's my favorite. Because for whatever reason, we just we saw that movie and just kind of liked it. Just for whatever reason, saw that in the theaters. Everybody else hated it. Everyone else kind of hated it, but we sort of liked it. And it's going to let a little bit of pink work its way here out onto the face. It is in a couple of places there before we come back with some lighter colors. Also, here is our... There you are. You're hiding on me there. One of our other quadruple zero rounds there. Let's just uh, get that out of harm's way. And we're going to come back here with some of our black spinel. We did mix a little bit of the perline black with it as well. I just want to get the interior of this collar before we get too much further into all of the skin tones there. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I guess uh, I don't know what it was. Uh, I don't know if it, it, we thought it just didn't take itself too seriously and that's what made it interesting. Maybe people wanted a, a serious dragon movie. I'm not quite sure how you do something like that, but for whatever reason, that did not do so well. Ironically enough, it just happened to be one of George's favorite movies too, and that's why he did. That's why he did the bust of the Reign of Fire Dragon, which is uh, interesting because George went to high school. Well, to the east of me, because he is actually originally from Chicago. And he, I think he was maybe one year ahead of me in high school. But yep, right here in Chicago. Now, Total 420 likes chocolate milk. I also like chocolate milk, Total 420. I I prefer it to be fortified with some extra nutrients. Um, maybe some Baileys. Uh, actually, rum is a satisfactory is a satisfactory oh 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 gee was armored wolf speaking of which uh, i saw the sailor what was the stuff that you had gotten the the rum there it was sailor something i saw that at our local establishment they actually have that there and I've, of course i've already forgotten the name but it was sailor something and i'm i think that was what uh, you had gotten at gen con and they actually had that at the local establishment there. Sailor Jerry, thanks, Total 420. <laughs> and this, yeah, there is literally just a few drops left, and Big, Big Jim Slade is like, uh, hey, 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 lady, what? What do you want? Do you have a quarter? He's like, we don't use money in the future. He's like, well, but do you, do you have a quarter? He's like, we don't use money. He's like, well, I'll give you a nickel for a quarter. He's like, again? Don't use money in the future. It's like, well, that's just lame. So, Big Jim, how are you doing? And, folks, be sure to give Big Jim Slade a follow because that, that monster of the week we were just talking about with the dramatic ending and the one character doing this and that and the other, well, that's, uh, you will be able to see that if you follow Big Jim Slade because he runs the monster of the week. So, Big Jim, that was... Uh, 
quite the dramatic end. I only saw the very, very, very end part. And then, of course, there was the whole, so what did I miss? And I got to see that as well. So, big jibs laid. I hope that you're doing good. Hopefully, you have uh, recovered from all the drum drama of that, that uh, epic ending there. I think we're going to start to work in some lighter tones here now as well. Let's do that. And all the while, the paint is mixing, of course. We'll let this paint do its mixing thing. Yeah, Big J, that was uh, quite the uh, bit of a turn right there. It seemed to uh, have quite the impact, which is always fun. It, uh, well, it's a dangerous universe, right? The the mon It's a monster of the week. It's not the Nerf. Uh, it's not the Puddles Nerf toy of the week. It's a monster of the week. Things should die a lot. Now we're going to get her cheekbones a little bit lighter up here, too. And it gets, this is the wonderful thing about the O's. You can see it's all just blending together nice and easy like there. Uh, Perception wants a Ferengi to be money with uh, buddies with the goblin. So will they just uh, be uh, holding hands, running down the street, reciting the rules of acquisition then? Uh, what was there, 275 or 273 or something like that? I, I think there's a couple of hundred rules of acquisition. I know they made a book of it. They made a book of the rules of acquisition. I'm going to come in here with uh, a little bit of ombre right there. We'll, just, uh, we'll start to get even a couple more. Sort of mid-tones in it. Less of the darks and more of the mid-tones. I uh, wish I did oil paints this well. Ah, well, 420, it's uh, one way to kind of get started with the oils. is the same way I got started with watercolors when I was in school. Now, you would take a, a figure, something that's got like big surfaces like this, relatively simple, and then maybe take one light color, one dark color, and that's it. Just use those two. I mean, you can see there's... Not a whole bunch of colors on this, but yet it's got quite a bit of drama to it. So just think of something like that, because <laughs> when I was in school, and we talk about this all the time, we were allowed four, we were allowed one color for the first four months. It wasn't until almost the halfway point of the year where we actually had three colors. That was it. Because they didn't want us fighting the medium and color palettes and all that kind of stuff, too. So start off nice and simple for yourself. Looks like Big Jim is doing some painting as well. Oh, that's right, because you got the you got the thing going on tonight, right? The later on your the hangout stuff. So that should be fun. I'm sure Kathy will be joining you guys there. Oh, what the heck here? Let's uh, throw a little bit of a pink into here, just just to do something like that. And then we, uh, no, we, I don't think we need it necessarily darker underneath it. We just need that color more solidified. And we're going to do that here with the S Fultum. Yep, the same here with the chin. Where's my, that's, that's a little, that was getting a little bit dark and it had, uh, too much of that translucent color going on there. So that's a little better now. Yeah, I think that's uh that's handy. I think we're caught up now on that chat. Oh, are we I'm looking over here at this. I might do wow, even what the heck? Let's push this a little further here. See what happens. Just a smidge more right at the top of the eyebrow here and now I'm going to take more of the Egyptian violet this time though we're going to have a little bit of our opaque color in there ah there we are it's not going to be much of a value difference but it's going to be a color difference that's what I'm looking for here 
not really changing the value, just the color. Get ourselves a little bit of our, ah, see Egyptian violet in there. Not a color difference, but just messing around, or not a value difference, sorry. Just messing around with a little bit of color in there. Can't hurt. Certainly will make it a little more interesting. It's not going to be, people won't look at that and go, wait a minute, there's some kind of violet color in those shadows. Nope. Yes. <laughs> They're barely going to notice anything's there. I don't think I'll do too much lighter as far as the colors on the ears go here. And again, we'll we'll see if we can find the earrings. If we can't locate them, we'll just try and... I think, actually, I could probably make it out of just some paper clips. I mean, I've done it before. Might just have to do that. Uh, Bitron says, Rule 8 of the Book of Acquisition, small print leads to large risk. Uh, oh, Bitron, that's what we... Oh, I'm just... Now you just got me thinking about a little Book of Revelations there, a printing book. Oh, we gotta, there's got to be something with settings. So, so Landrast, we have to come up with a Book of Wapple thing that says something about the settings. Where, you know, he who lives dangerously with settings shall end up with only bare supports. <laughs> Something like that. Now, I'm, that, that's, not, that's not a targeting of anybody. That's just, uh, that's just in defense of me. The guy that says, oh, look, I'm going to print a 10-slice a base. And it's going to take four hours to print the 10-slice base. <laughs> and everyone just lets say, wait a minute, what? Wait a minute, how long did that thing take to print? Me with the most cautious settings in the entire universe. Now, I, I, yep, I'm looking at this too. There's a little bit of a. We'll need to get some light over there too. Yep, just looking again at the at the references there, and it's showing that. Here, so we're trying to lighten that up a bit, and then let's see if we can maybe throw some pupils in her eyes and have her look a little bit less uh, demonic there. Van Dyke Brown, probably some umber might do the trick right here. Which way? It's always best to kind of have him looking off to the side, not necessarily directly at you. And then we'll even let a little bit of the color that's there mix in. I'm looking actually, well, there's the pupils pretty much make contact with the lower lids, so I think we can drag that down a bit lower there. Yeah, Valfera, I've only I've only done the auto supports just a couple of times, and and they were sort of an inconsequential things, uh, uh, nothing that that would have been important. All right, so I think we have we have that gaze going off into a certain direction there. And again, this is not there's still a little bit of lightness there. It's a little bit of lightness there. And just for funsies, let's see what happens here. So I think, uh, oh, actually, this could be very interesting here. So we get a little bit of value difference there. But you can see the difference in the eyes with the darker eyes. But a lot of the, uh, the values end up in the same place there. Here, let's uh, crank this up to our normal mark, mark there. Now, uh, Tiny Tusk, we had Van Dyke Brown, and that was it. So with watercolors, there's just uh, because you're not you're not working with white, at least, well, <laughs> not in the early days. I was not using any white with watercolors. It was just Van Dyke Brown. That was your one color, and there was nothing else. And you, oh, 
you definitely weren't allowed to have any kind of opaque white or anything like that on your palette. That, ooh, yeah, that was uh, definitely verboten right there. You didn't have any of that. There was no opaque. It wasn't until my second year of being in that class, and that was it wasn't my fault. It was it was Irv's fault because he sent me off to one of his uh, his buddies, another artist friend of his, to one of his workshops, and he used opaque white watercolor in a very interesting way. It was uh, I think it was called Pro White. That's what it was called. I'm gonna get a, a smidge more. Liner color here, so I want it to be a little less yellowy, so I'm just going to take some white in there. A little less yellow, a little more white, lighten up the... And we'll, we'll take our blending brush into this as well. Ah, see, now that looks a little bit more pinkish right there. Let's uh, crank this up here, and oh, we could use also some light over here too, and some over there. But there's that pre-glaze is still a part of it. There's there's still pre-glaze in there. I keep sticking my finger in the Indian yell. Hey, Lamanes, how you doing? So, Lamanes, sorry that I haven't been able to join in on the Discord fun there. It's been a very much an action-packed week. Lots of videos that had to be filmed. In fact, I might have to film another video, maybe even after we're done here. Uh, no, actually, I won't be able to because I'm going to be uploading a video. Never mind. So my apologizings for not uh, not being able to get into the Discord and do stuff there. Yeah, well, I'm an S, uh, <laughs> like we've been I've been saying here tonight. I've pretty much been getting to sleep at six six thirty in the morning, something like that. It uh, the work days just keep getting longer and longer and longer. Just looking at. The references, boy, they really did like to, in the 60s, they enjoyed lighting people so that you could see these long eyelashes cast a shadow onto the onto their faces for sure. But Lominus, I hope otherwise that you are doing good and that you're having lots of fun, lots of success with your printer and such. I think I'll lighten that up a little too. Yeah, let's do some here. Taking our ombre. Make sure that it doesn't get too light. Yeah, and then we're getting a little bit of separation from the hair. We might also have to, I think here we got a decent amount of the red there. Might have to go a little bit further with the red over on that side. Ah, uh, Nosferatu has to sleep there. All right, uh, well, thanks for joining Nosferatu, and do you have a good one? And, folks, be sure to give Nosferatu a follow. And, Nosferatu, you'll be streaming at your usual, was it 5 Central, I think, is when you start? And we'll get, boy, that black spinel. Oh, baby. Black spinel, that is just an amazing, really enjoying the heck out of that. That is fabulous. So, Megan, I hope that you're doing good. Ah, yep, okay, so I got that right. Couldn't remember the name of Ghost Tents, but hey, I could remember that. I, I think I should get I, I should get credit points for that. I remembered one thing tonight. So say we all. So say we all. Oh, Omega, do it a little gift sub action. A little gift sub means it's a gift to me of nutrients. Thank you very much. I will gladly accept those nutrients because nutrients are good. They're good for you. 
Let's see if we can get some highlight action going on here. Maybe right there. Let's see if we can do that on the other side. Hopefully in the same same direction there. And we'll just we'll call it good there. Let's get a little more light in our eye there. So hopefully that starts to uh yeah, I think that's work in there. Let's get some of our lighter pinks here. Right about there. Maybe a smidge more. Give it almost a bit of a gloss there. It is broken up. It's not a solid line. It's a broken up a little bit. And Megan, it's a little bit of fruit juice right there. A little bit of fruit juice. Just that it's all we don't we don't want to do it. It's all for the good of the stream, right? It keeps the voice going. It's just uh, we don't like that medicine. It's all. It's all for the good of the stream. That's all. Otherwise, yeah, so we don't like that stuff. Who wants that stuff? Ooh, I'm going to be sneaky here. I'm going to be a little bit sneaky and cheeky. We took some of the umber. And we're going to get right here on the top of the... There we go. So I think now... Ah, now I can really see the... Uh, she's like... <laughs> Oh my goodness! This it's the, it's kind of are they gonna like do a, a a trio here or something like that? She's like, "Yo, dudes, what's up, man?" And he's like, uh, "Hey, have you seen the old guy with the ganja yet?" He's like, "What? What's that? What's ganja?" It's like you know the ganja, the good stuff. It's like really, you're gonna bother some this nice lady comes in here and you're gonna bother about the ganja. It's like, but but yeah, that stuff is good. <laughs> Uh, I just, I saw, when she was looking off to the side, I just couldn't resist doing that. Ah, uh, gee, man. <laughs> That's, uh, that would be quite the intergalactic kiss there, I think, wouldn't it? Yeah, like Rubdi says, somebody is finally bigger than Jeeves in Worcester. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Let's, let's say, I think Eowyn is actually, nope. Eowyn's actually bigger. Yeah, Eowyn's a little bit bigger. <laughs> now, this is the one that we sculpted. That's not from Blackheart. So don't don't uh, don't head over to Blackheart looking for Lord of the Rings busts or something like that, because you won't find them there. You won't you won't find any Lord of the Rings stuff there. Hey, Christopher Blancaster, uh, thanks. Uh, we would uh, certainly enjoy some of that. Oh, you know what? That was kind of fun right there. I'm going to see if I can't do that right on this side here. Just a tiny hint of it there. Yeah. Okay, that helps. We need some more light back in there, too. I'm um, just looking at that. Yeah, as I see this here, the way they've got it, it's that crazy 1960s lighting. Ah, Terra Rosa, thank you. That's also going to get a little bit of a reddishness to this. Not a radish, just a little reddish. But just looking at the way they show that lit, I think we need a little more light in here. Yep, that seems to be doing it. Uh, let's see, Carrick is asking, let me get through your question there. Is it easy to paint a... Uh, let's see. So Carrick, I'll, I'll just uh, I'll, I'll just try and catch a couple of questions there. You can always uh, re-ask him if I don't get to all of them there. Now the oil paints, I used to think that there was no point in using them if you couldn't do it all wet into wet. But once I started doing my army painting series, like the the Thousand Suns and such, I realized that's not the case. And where's my Sisters of Battle here? Once we started doing the Sisters of Battle, this was another army painting series where I had no choice because it takes sometimes two, two and a half weeks to film one army painting series. So the paint's going to dry. It turned out to be really, really handy. And I was just doing 
here. This is my newest uh, series right here. I actually now plan for it when I'm doing my army painting series. So right here, this was again five episodes. You can bet that the paint dried from one episode to the next. It was most, it was bone dry. And see that flag right there, that yellow flag? Let me see if this picture still has it. Yeah. I actually, that was actually a dry brush. It was the same kind of dry brushing stuff that we're doing here, but instead of wet into wet, and you can still do the stuff with the blending brush. So just because the oils have dried between sessions, in some ways that actually means you can do even more with glazing. Now the, the oil paints to me, they actually take up less space because I don't have very many of them. I don't have very many oil paints. Now you might want to have just a separate little something, a cabinet or whatever to store your miniatures in while you're waiting for them or in between because even though we don't have any pets here, just because of me, I guess I shed so much that uh, sometimes there's a, there's hair that'll get onto the miniature. So if you have pets, you might want to at least maybe put a box over your miniature or something just to keep the pet hair off of them. <laughs> We're making Chris laugh too much. Uh, Chris, what was it? What, what we always said, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, come for the miniature painting, but stay for the puppet shows. So here, we'll just, uh, so the, again, the palette is just, uh, ironically enough, it is the same parchment paper that we would use on our wet palette, except uh, we just take it and we just do a little bit of our, you can see the glue residue on there. That's a little glue stick and yeah, just a piece of cardboard gluing it to that. That's all it is. And uh, Carrick, yeah, I definitely now almost plan on having that, that when I'm doing my army painting stuff, let it dry and then kind of uh, take advantage of that. I just, I didn't, I didn't know if there was going to be an advantage when I first started doing that. And then, then I started to realize, oh, there definitely is. So here's a nice little blending brush that we're going to use. And at this point, it's as much about brush stroke management as it is anything else. Little Spark my gun. Thank you so much, Chris from Lancaster, for that follow. That is very much appreciated here. Let me see if we can find our fast Gandalf. Says, Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Wait a minute, are you the guy with the ganja? It's like, uh, yeah, what to do you? She says, what's this ganja stuff? It's like, it's really good. He's like, is that is that why you smell funny? It's like, I do not smell funny. A wizard smells exactly how he means to. Hey, Brushcraft, how are you doing? Yeah, like Grumdy was saying, that uh, you can just sort of go away and come back. Speaking of going away and coming back, it's Gandalf again. She's like, you're back? It's like, yeah, I'm always here. It's like, you know, I heard from that guy, the elf. He says you have weird friends and that you always crash at his house. It's like, well... Yeah. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much for that follow. So Brushcraft, uh, folks, be sure to give Brushcraft a follow. Yes, you must go do that. That is your mission to go do that. So Brushcraft, how you doing? Oh, that uh, actually, oh, Nessie, did you see Brushcraft's, uh, the droid that Brushcraft was working on? That was really nifty uh, brushcraft. I was like, I, I meant to ask you if you had used uh, interference oil paints on that maybe because uh, it was looking pretty sweet there. Now, uh, see what we just did here. We just incorporated a little bit of that phantom and guess what? Sort of like a dry brush. Yeah, sort of like a dry brush almost. So say we all. So say we all. Uh, Lominus is, looks like Lominus is doing the gift sub thing. Thank you very much, Lominus. We'll get you a little bit of a toast here in just a second. But that's starting to look nice and rosy there. Thank you very much, Lominus. I appreciate that. That's a tiny tusk. There's also some really cool night miles from GW with the paint over once. 
Uh, so Tiny Test, this is actually just uh, it's just the Fanchon Red. Speaking of which, speaking of Fanchon Red, why don't we get another one of our... Here, let's use this. This Fanchon Red is pretty much magical right here. And thank you again, Lamines, so much. That is appreciated. It sure makes a difference. So say we all. And oh my goodness, that's right. It's April 12th. So, gee whiz, what the heck am I doing here? I completely forgot. Lamines, thank you for reminding me. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun. Uh, Diamond's got back. Thank you so much. He's like, uh, lady, you, you don't have a back? She's like, get out of here. It's like, but but she doesn't. Look, there's there's no back. So thank you so much for that follow. Yeah, uh, Brushcraft, that's uh, ah, just some blues into a natural gray. It has a very glimmery look. It really did look great, Brushcraft. Yeah, that uh, that Croak right there, I think that's a must-have. Ah, boy, if... That's one of the that's one of the blog images that I just have to get on here is my Lord Croak, the the temple that I built. I actually scratch sculpted a Lord Croak back in the day. Huge surprise, I'm sure. Ah, so Brushcraft, what do you think it's gonna be? Eighty five bucks, seventy five, a hundred. Because I, I couldn't really tell quite how big it was. I only just saw it earlier today. Didn't really get a chance to study it too much. You guys would know better than me. Ah, so okay, so 110. Uh, so Chris, I don't have any Discord stuff. Uh, I do a ton of social media things. The Instas, the, the Facebook stuff. And that pretty much takes several hours each day, just that stuff. So, so far, no Discord yet. Maybe later this year, it's something that I figure out. Kathy and I were actually trying to discuss some possibilities for uh, different, well, channels, I guess you would say, that would have real, kind of real-world applications here for all the oil painting stuff. Oh, you could get a Seraphon army just to play with the new Croak. Yeah, it, it's funny, Grumdy. I just remember the old Croak there. Oh, I was tempted. No, we'll just go here with the Cadmium Yellow Light. Cadmium Yellow Light into this. More. We don't have to layer. This is this is oil paint, for crying out loud. We're not going to layer here. Oh, the, <laughs> he's so good. That uh, they'll just slap that heavy price tag on him. He could be the size of Sticky Wicket, but it wouldn't matter because if he, if he's that good. So we're using one of our little micro filberts here. Speaking of micro bus, we're using a micro filbert. Yeah, that's, uh, and that's got a little bit of the cadmium yellow in there. We talked about this. I think it must have. Oh, it had to have been the last stream. Because yeah, we were doing all of our uh, all of our object source lighting guys here, and that's we were talking about yeah, not using white to highlight red pretty much uh, well ever because that can lead to bad things. But it certainly would be fun to. I've never actually painted a croak. Well, and, and what the heck? Here, let's just uh, because we we may have done a lizard man army. We might have done a lizard man army back in the day. Uh, where's our where's our lizard man right here? There we go. So there's our first fantasy army, and those uh, those engines of the gods, those were scratch sculpted. I mean, of course, the temple guard, those didn't exist. Our our mage priest right there, that was actually well, gosh, probably like a second edition lizard man figure. We made a how to for him and everything. And there's uh, again our more of our let's see those are the cold ones right there oh we actually we made that croak yeah so let's go back to that that croak figure there yeah we made him too out of a saurus and then there's our our skink mage priest with his own little palanquin and see that uh that little galaxy type thing that's something i'm thinking of doing on the base here and then of course there's the there's the general of the army there's sticky wicket look at that games day chicago 2009 and there's a couple more views of the army here. So, yeah, that's our old Lizardman army. 
And there's the Temple of Blood. We played at least three games on this board. Also a display board. There was actually rules for that, that blood stream around there. You could actually cross it on the causeways. So yeah, that was uh, that was our old Lizardman army back in the day. Uh, so Vetbot, how many years away do you think the this? Well, a, do you think it'll be square basing? B, do you think it'll be epic rules and or epic sized? Or will it be? I, I'm I'm assuming it'll be 28 mil sized. Of course, I know what the first three letters in assume are. I've always, I was taught that when I was just a wee lad in Boy Scouts, what the first three letters of assume are. And you should never do that, but uh, I'm going to assume that it's 28 millimeter. Unless they just go out with both. Ah, thanks, Grumdy. That was, uh, that was the very first army that I ever did. I think uh, people have heard the tournament story. The very first tournament I was ever in, the person, well, let's just say that, in effect, he, he collapsed the table that we were playing on, even though I told him a million times, I said, Rob, you know what happens when you lean on the table? Every Wednesday, you lean on the table, the table collapses because of the way it's put together. And, of course, he was leaning on the table. Then the table collapsed, and all both armies started heading towards the floor, including all of my scratch sculpted lizard men, including scratch sculpted pterodons. And the only reason he's alive to this day is because he happened to be sitting down, and he stopped the board about halfway down, and his miniatures acted as speed bumps for mine, which slowed my down. Uh, we'll lose all the good. Well, they got it back if it's epic scale or round bases. Oh my goodness! Wow, Vetbod, the the boy that phone was really going crazy on the autocorrect right there. I talk about basing so much on my phone that I actually did. I tried to type in vase once, and it wouldn't. It just kept putting out basing. <laughs> it just it wouldn't accept the word vase. It was so used to me typing out basing hey welsh gamer guy nice to see you back so yeah brushcraft i think i still i I still have to j just for uh old time's sake and i never actually got to paint the original croak a at some point i will try to remember to put up you know, some, some pictures of my, my sculpted Croak there. I'll try to remember. I promise. So now I got a little bit of the brilliant yellow pale in there. But that's after we had a lot of yellow work its way into this. Oh, thanks, Welsh Gamer Guy. It's been pretty darn active. Uh, been obviously doing a lot of the filming. But the 3D printing element has really, it, it's taken on a, a life of its own, which is great because it means now that my Lord of the Rings project is far more viable than it was. Because speaking of GW and, you know, half of the Lord of the Rings figures are unavailable at any one time. Even if you had the, all the money in the world, you still couldn't get them because they just don't have them. And there's there's at least two. At least two uh, fo uh, manufacturer or sculptors that are doing Lord of the Rings 3D files, or at least 3D or themed. <laughs> Not exactly, but themed. I mean, it is all just fantasy stuff, anyways. Frozen Toes, nice to see you. How you been doing? <laughs> this uh, Lamina says, as phones get larger, the keyboards get smaller. Oh, man, I'm still using, what is it, a Galaxy S7 or something like that? Or not, yeah, I think it's an S7 or whatever. That That's, uh, most folks would say that that's pretty much just an abacus by now. So, Welsh Gamer Guy, I hope that you've been doing good. It's uh, been a little while there. So actually, what kind of stuff have you been working on? Let's get a little bit of a 
some kind of lighter color here on the collar. I don't even care what it really is. Uh, it's For whatever reason, it's a light purple. Not sure why. It just happened that way. But when it hits all the spinel right here, it's going to start turning more of a grayish color. Again, this is why we don't have layering in oil paints, right? We're just going to have a blending brush here. Boom. Why, why would I sit there and do a whole bunch of layers on that when I could just uh, do that? Ah, that's so much easier. Yeah, uh, like boom, done, that's it. Uh, let me see. <coughs> so Sorry about that. So frozen toes, I hope that uh, things are going well there and Monday wasn't too crazy for you. Do a little bit more of our blending right over there and uh, poof, there it is. Now I've been keeping up. Uh, let's see, do it, finished your commission, took a break. But now I'm back at it and painting a corn war band at the moment. Uh, <laughs> uh, is that stippling technique? Uh, <laughs> Welsh gamer guy. The only reason I just I couldn't resist laughing because I'm thinking stopping techniques is probably not the best way to finish a, an army. I'm like, how the heck does a stopping technique work for getting miniatures done? I thought it was some kind of new innovative thing or something like that. I just I saw that and that's all I could think. So I apologize. I I should. Uh, I just I couldn't resist. Uh, I couldn't resist. Here, let's see if we can come back to our various blacks. I really love this pearling black. That is very fun. Let's sharpen up the edge on that too. Before we maybe come in here and also then get a bit of secondary light on that. Where's my blending brush again? And when I feel, feel the need to blend, just stopping. There we go. Uh, so I, I just uh, had to do that. And what I also wanted to do was get this little bit of extra light right in there. I mean, you could see just how laborious and difficult this has been. I mean, look at that. We've been at this for an hour and 27 minutes. Come on, man. That's like, that's backbreaking right there. How am I going to survive this hour and 27 minutes slaving away at just this one bust here that started with uh, absolutely nothing? It just looked like this. Well, not exactly like that with the spiky crown. Hey, I got to tell you that on the half size one, here, let's get to that one. Is this it? Yeah. That's half the size of a human head. That thing right there, you could probably take out 10 people with that thing. Those those are some serious spikes there on that. Uh, I do believe I did call it the crown of thorns because, no kidding, it was a crown of thorns. That uh, that was painful. Hey, Def Energy, how you doing? Uh, I jumped into the oils immediately, and it's been way better than the small time I spent with the acrylics. Yeah, I'm perception. I'm glad that it was. Uh, well, we caught you early, <laughs> right? And and then you were able to kind of dive right in. Cinder, how you doing? Yeah, the the stopping technique. That is a uh, boy. And I thought perfection was the enemy of completion, but apparently stopping is the uh, enemy of completion. I. I had that book, the Book of Wapple. Gee whiz, are we going to have to amend the Book of Wapple? That that the stopping technique is the enemy of completion. Uh, Welsh gamer guy, I do in fact have Spock. I have Spock, Kirk, McCoy, and is there? Uh, I don't know if there's Scotty. I don't know if I have Scotty, but I do have uh, Spock, Kirk, and McCoy. So we there's more Star Trek busts we can work on. Uh, well, Cinder, I hope that that goes well. Um, like, like you said, I think you said it just takes a few minutes or something like that, but hopefully it all goes uh, the way you want it to, and good luck with that. Uh, I don't think so, Welsh Gamer Guy. That, that could be another wave of releases, uh, so don't 
I wouldn't be surprised necessarily. It could also have to do with maybe just getting the actual person's permission to because they have the license for all this stuff and, and they might just have to, you know, because it has to, I think they have to run it by the person themselves and they have to approve the sculpt, I believe. So who knows, it could just be taking longer to get that approved. Maybe then some of the other ones did. Oh, let's see. So Def Energy, I'm sorry if I missed you. Let me let me scroll back up here, see if I can find Ah, there we go. Very new hobby painter. Uh Def Energy, it's the one benefit like Perception was saying about doing doing the oil sooner rather than later is that I don't want to say you have to unlearn things, but there's just the acrylics is a different medium, so it requires a different approach. And then the oils do, which you would, it's not like you have to necessarily unlearn it, but you'd have to kind of set that aside a little bit. And, and for some folks, that's not always the easiest thing to do, is to kind of set aside things that they've been doing for years. Uh, Perception, I think uh, next gen. Uh, I kind of stopped watching Deep Space Nine in favor of Babylon 5. And what was the uh, the Voyager one? Started watching it because at the time we were doing the conventions and I needed to do paintings and stuff from that. I think I only maybe got two seasons into Voyager. And I think maybe we saw part of, what was the last season, Enterprise or whatever. I think we saw maybe a two seasons of that tops as far as full seasons go so I, I, I would probably have to say it probably have to be next gen uh, the only episode that I ever liked of Enterprise was actually the one where they did the mirror universe and including the credits and I was actually happy because I thought the show was doing so badly they needed to change things around and I thought ooh They've actually, they've gone in a fantastic new direction. Oh, this is going to be great. And then they disappointed me by going back to the same old junk that they were doing before. So, yeah, that would, oh, that would have been great. That's the Star Trek series that I want to see, but apparently no one else does. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'll have to look and see which ones are here. I know that the Kirk, McCoy, and Spock are here. I don't know if the con showed up. Yeah, Bitron, uh, the B5 stuff, as soon as that happened, yeah, Star Trek kind of started going away a little bit, uh, as evidenced here. Where's our, uh, where, there we go. There we are, right, boom, there we are. So, yeah, uh, I've got a whole bunch of B5 art, and actually a whole bunch of the paintings are signed. I've actually got... Two paintings signed by Peter Jurisic, one signed by Mira Ferlan. I do have some Star Trek ones that are signed. Hey, Sweet White, nice to see you again. So I don't know. I'd have to look and see. I don't think I have the con bust. Maybe I'd... No, I don't think so. I don't think I do. Uh, Nessie knows that I know that he loves his B5. I just like the fact that uh, it was it was a scary place and there was uh, there was not a lot of magic technology to to save you. And of course you had Zathras, but then you also had Zathras. Then you also had Zathras. Then the other Zathras. <laughs> we are all Zathras. Now, I'm just going to use a little bit of a pin line right there just to get down into that. Uh, most people in the chat have no idea what the heck I'm talking about. Uh, Welsh Gamer Guy, I do not have that. Uh, there, there was one point for my niece way back in the 90s. She was really into Next Gen. And I made, she had some of the Star Trek action figures, the, the Next Gen action figures. So... 
I actually made the bridge of the Next Gen Enterprise so that she could play with the Star Trek uh, Next Gen action figures on it. And that was a pretty crazy project back in the day. Uh, Nessie, yes, we have to have a Jakar, we have to have a Londo, and we have to have a Delin bust. We have to do those. Well, I think, uh, I don't know, I might have to start with the Delin bust just as a little bit of a memorial there. I think we'd have to do that for sure. Yeah, Bithron, uh, well, I do believe uh, at the time it was called Deep Space Wine, I, I think is, uh, that, that, that's what that series got labeled. And I think they, they tried to start doing some of the stuff that B5 was doing as far as more of an episodic story arc kind of thing. Uh, but Chris is more of a Star Wars guy. So, well, if Chris, if the Star Wars is your thing, go back and check these this whole series here. Where's my Mandos? Where's my man? There they are. So go check out the highlights for these. We did. We spent an entire week of painting Mandalorians. There were no banjos, uh, sadly. We were going to paint Banjalorians, but no, we just painted them all as regular Mandalorians right there. Hey, Manix. Now, of course, actually, uh, actually, a Kosh bus could be very interesting. A Kosh bus could be very interesting. Now, Valfara was into the Starscape or Farscape thing. I think, I think we might have seen a couple seasons of that. It was well after the fact. I think the show was already off the air by the time we saw that. Total's got phthalo blue, black uh, ivory, burnt umber. Uh, total, definitely the indigo and the terra rosa. Th those are two you're really going to want to get because they're also really cheap. And they're they're really fantastic colors too. Uh, and Velfera also had some... By, uh, Kathy, I think she also watched a lot of Buck Rider. Oh, V... Right, that was another favorite series of hers, and and the original one, I like the mini series or whatever, not so much the TV show. I think she was a big fan of the mini series. Can't use in our blending brush here. Not so much to blend the colors; it's more to manage the brush strokes there. The so Lamines was more into the Farscape. Yeah, we only saw, like I say, maybe. Maybe two seasons of that, if that much. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go all the way back over here. We're going to get some more of our reflected light into this, I think. Uh, Mithron, actually, one of my favorite episodes... Well, of course, it you, you they kind of reprised one of the characters from that later on. But remember the episode where they were doing the invasion... And his dad showed up, the general, and they they had it out there. So that was uh, that was one of my f one of my favorite episodes because it also did lead to what was it? Dodger, I think, was the name of the character that came back in the episode where all of the dead people came onto the station. Ah, sweet white, there's just nothing like the oils to make life so much easier. And I mean so much easier. This is just incredibly, what is this? Out one hour, 38 minutes. It was it was just primer. It was this color primer. There was nothing here. One hour, 38 minutes. Now, perception. Now, which, uh, which is it? Is it the, something like the Clonacano magenta? Or is it something more like the purple matter? There's a couple of really neat oil magentas out there. Of course, uh, you know, we, we sometimes have fun making our own, too, our own dirty little magenta. I, I guess we're going to have to have that color there, too. Yeah, so I get everybody the uh, uh, Armor Wolf just posted there. We will be uploading right after we're done here. 
the latest series and by latest series I mean the latest one it's just this video is rendering right now all that paint is still wet on those miniatures so there's our latest series and that's about multi-basing which you could use for you could use part of that almost as a terrain piece too so there's there's a lot of different aspects to that Hans Windsor Newton Magenta uh, perception I I really do uh, well, I guess I got Quinacrino Magenta out here. It's actually sitting here on the palette right now. So I'm just uh, getting a little bit more ping here. Just kind of lightening this up a smidge. Come back with our blending brush here. Oh, yeah. Now, Velfera, that's one I never really saw. I saw the movie. Never saw the series. Uh, did they make a spin-off uh, Stargate Atlantis or something like that too? I could swear they did. <laughs> that episode must have burned up all the ganja. Now we actually did add a few chapters. These are some new chapters here to the Book of Wapo here. And was it the last two weeks or so we've really been focusing on the whole dry brush thing? One of the reasons why things like burnt umber or these darker colors that are translucent actually cover lighter colors is because of the dry brush. So we talk about thin over thick. Well, dry versus wet is the same way. And what do we do a lot of the time? We, we, add, we add darks. Now, that's not just true with metals or object source lighting. It's kind of all the time because you can't just keep highlighting into oblivion. Sometimes you need darks. And, of course, contrast is more than just light versus dark. And what we're going to do is we're going to show that here. So I think you can see there's that, that little bit of a color difference, right? You got the kind of the pinks here on this side of the face, and then it's more of a brownish tone there. Now, if we do this, well, now it's just light and dark. You don't see the differences yeah, you don't see the pinks in the skin over here. You can see the reflected light on the chin there, but you don't see any of the pink that's going to come back as we do this. As we do this, there you go. So that's kind of a little illustration there of the Book of Wapo. Universe? Holy smokes. Uh, so what was Atlantis one of those uh, one-season things? Now, was that the one with the... They look like ghost people or something like that. I, again, I've only ever seen, I only ever saw like the advertisements of it. Yeah, perception. We have to have dirty little magenta. Dirty little magenta is the best color of all. Again, this is not about blending the color. This is just managing some brush strokes right here. Oh, thanks, Chris. Uh, the Book of Wapo right there, that was actually chap that was actually chapters 50 through 53. Seriously, there's there's 53 chapters of the Book of Wapo, and of course Nessie knows that the very first chapter is if a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere, which kind of explains one of the reasons why we do the whole preglaze thing, is because of the we want those colors going everywhere, right? There's green up here. That same green is down in here. Even though this is red, we've got green here. We have some bluish black in the hair over it here, also in the eyes. So we're trying to, again, get that color spread out everywhere. It uh, seriously is very important to do that. Ah, see, Nessie, Nessie chose the proper route and got the tattoo. <laughs> Is, is that going to have to be merch? We we offer a tattoo of the Book of Wapple. That, that's got to be tattooed on your forehead. That That's the deluxe merch right there, is a forehead tattoo of the Book of Wapple, all 55 chapters. Oh, Space Vamp. Okay, so I wasn't, uh, I wasn't misremembering that then. All right, that's good. Because I thought I was... Uh, not quite remembering that. Uh, they're talking about a new Stargate series. 
well and of course there's the there's the well if it ever actually airs the the Amazon Lord of the Rings series that I think they started working on that 10 years before Peter Jackson started working on the movies so maybe at some point that'll be on Amazon actually Amazon didn't even exist when they started working on it actually Amazon may cease to exist actually after they're done with it I don't know so they better finish it fast here we're gonna that, that's just too sharp of an edge there ah that's that's more like it certainly don't want a really super sharp edge right there I'm just trying to get this brush down in here I can't even see it hardly but I know there's a gap right in there that's better now I'll have to come back the other way here and do some skin tone in there Hello, little hobbit. Spark my gun, John. Uh, thank you so much, Streaming Empire, for that follow. Hello, little hobbit. To spark my gun, It's a giant tuss. It's like, wait, what? Who are you calling giant? I am precisely the size I mean to be. Yeah, how about you love the, uh, well, look at this. Gee whiz, blue? Okay. Look what's in, see that purple in there? You can see, look at here, you can see almost more of a cobalt blue right there. Maybe more of a uh, Prussian blue in there. And then here it's got a little bit more green to it. So this is also on the, now this is not oils, but it, uh, it was on the YouTube channel. This is our uh, Vizirian bust here from Song of Ice and Fire. That's also from Blackheart Models. But like, like Brushcraft was saying there, eventually you really just start to go, you start to just naturally head over to the shadow areas more than just highlighting. More more work in the shadows, more mid-tones, less and less with the highlights. Is there a Stila in the house? Oh, I thought I saw Stila there. I, I'm sure maybe at one point she'll be here. So, yeah, I was able to. Ah, I was glad I was able to get the lighter colors up in there, kind of cut into the hair a little bit. I might do the same over here too. The ears might also add some light to those here. Speaking of darks, I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm actually gonna take some of the dark that's here, pull that out. Yep. Yeah. Instead of making the red lighter, I'm just gonna make this darker. Get, grab the blending brush right here. And away we go. There. <laughs> See that? It just uh, it can be so easy. We're going to do the same over here, too. Instead of making that lighter, we'll just make the folds darker. Like so. Uh, if I keep making that lighter and lighter, well, then I'm going to actually have to start. It's either going to become orange or it's going to become pink, one or the other. We don't want those. We don't want porridge either. I guess that would be somewhere in between. I don't think that, that doesn't sound quite so good. Ah, uh, Monkey Love, okay. I'm, uh, I'm glad that we were able to give you a little bit of extra inspiration there. That's always good. And they actually too, and the oils make that process a little bit easier of adding more darks. I, I don't know, maybe the maybe the acrylics make it just so easy to keep piling on highlights or whatever that that's kind of a kind of a natural instinct for folks. But with the oils, they, it really does. Boy, especially with the non-metallic metal stuff, boy, does that make a difference. Now again, I'm just wondering, is there any way what I could potentially do is just hit some darker, some kind of dark blue, just acrylic over here so that I can actually hang on to this thing. So just uh, give me a, a un momento here to just find some kind of acrylic paint that is darker. Where's my, that's not blue liner. Is this blue liner? No, that's brown liner. 
That's not what I'm looking for. Maybe this will do it here. Ah, okay. I'm just looking for anything that is darker here that I can just paint on the back side of that. And I'm just going to throw some of that over here. Not quite sure what I did with the lid to that thing, but that's all right. There it is. And we'll just grab ourselves uh, whatever brush here. And I'm just going to hit this with some acrylic so that it'll dry fast, but I can still have my fingers on that. Like so. And I don't think I'll I'll leave this out here because I'd like to actually use my my oils there and maybe do a little bit of uh show folks that kind of light into dark method with the oils. And this is just the Steiner Res primer as usual. Okay, I think we're now I'm gonna also hit this too with the, again a little bit of the that's just some acrylic right there just to Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing to the other bus while I'm doing this and while I wait for that to dry, we'll do the same thing here. Because we got a bunch of it now. I'll just do the same thing on this one. And we'll be doing our, our pre-glaze on this, and then i got to break out the interference. I'll see if I can actually maybe get out the powders, too. But I do have the interference paints. We can use those for sure. So Again, all I want to do is just get this part with some kind of dark on it here. I know this is not exactly super interesting right here. Okay, and again, just waiting for the other one to dry, so I figure I'll just hit this here. That's good, and then this will all be nice and dry for us later on. Set you aside. And that that's starting to dry here. Just make sure I get all these little crevices in here. Because I thought it might be fun to see something like this right here. Now, that was just, I did that with a airbrush or whatever back in the day. Now, here, let's, uh, while we wait for that to dry there, Let's check out some of our old 2D art, and you're going to recognize, I think, some of the whole Spacecape vibe right here. Let's get down to our art. So there's our, that is watercolors on hot press watercolor board. Same here. So you, you can see the, we like to do in our Starscapes here. And I think we've got, yep, there's another one right there. And if you look at, there's more. And there's even more. So yes, we, we did enjoy doing our, 2D art. I'm going to just get the... I just realized all too often the next day I come in here and realize, oh yeah, I never did wash off the brushes or clean the brushes, right? And there was, I did that with acrylics the other day and I went, oh yeah, that's a little different than the oils. Yeah, that didn't work out so well. But the brush cleaner, again, it's going to let that dry for a few more seconds here. And I'm going to take that advantage of that to get some of this junk off my hand. So this is for, guess what, dried acrylic and oil color. It's uh, not hazardous, no vapors. Just, I wouldn't drink it, but it has no nasty smell to it or any crazy stuff like that. It's it's uh, definitely much safer for you. Here, let's uh, just get a little bit of this onto our paper towel, move that out of harm's way, and you too. And look at this. Even the acrylic paint comes off, too. Look at that. We don't have a, quite the blue thumb anymore, but that's even the acrylic paint that's coming off. There. Now I am going to just 
spritz my hand. I try to wash it off as best as I can because we don't want to uh, be taking any paint off. So here, just let me do that real quick here. Just want to take a paper towel here, clean off my hand, and hopefully that base is now somewhat dry anyways. All right, I think we're good to go now. Hopefully so. Ah, uh, well, here we, oh, we can take a little trip here back to, well, let's head over to Middle Earth. Now, this was a massive project right here, and, and it's massive because this is 28 millimeter. Not kidding. It's a 28 millimeter here. Let's, let's take a look at it. Isn't it That base that that thing is on is 26 inches by 16 inches, something like that, or is it 28 by 16? It's just gigantic. That is several pounds of Sculpey right there. Uh, I didn't, there's no wood or anything like that. I sculpted the, the two dinosaurs. I sculpted the ground itself and the, not the platform, the, uh, the, uh, the structure around it there, the wood frame, all that stuff, but all done with Sculpey. You can check out the blog and that will show you all the crazy work in progress pictures. Of course, I didn't realize then that what was hauling that thing was actually the Great Beast of Golgoroth. So here, we'll, we'll come back here and we'll show you the Great Beast of Golgoroth. This is what we were doing one of our Sculpting Thursdays. So it was actually two of these guys that were hauling that thing. So it was actually two of those. So thank you so much, Megan, for that. And I think now that's mostly dry. It's not totally dry yet, so I might just use little bit of paper towel here. One second, let's set you down. There's a little paper towel there just to make sure that we're not uh, going to wipe away too much paint here. Like so. All right, that's better. And we'll just do this uh, just to make sure that uh, we're not wiping away too much of the paint just yet. Uh, Brushcraft is going to have to go into Lurk mode. All right, back to it now. And I'm going to... I was thinking about some of these areas up here that I want to sharpen. Ah, see that? That actually is... Uh, yeah, I need to sharpen up these highlights just a smidge here. This is using that black spinel. That is some massive... That is, uh, it is darker than dark. Now, I usually, in situations like I'll use the indigo with the Van Dyke brown mix or something. But this really does have some... Wow, that, that really can cover up things. Most, and it's also, I think it is rated semi-opaque. Yep. No, it's rated opaque. That's right. It's the other one. This is rated... Somehow. So that's good. even that is unusual for black, but opaque is super rare for black. Oh my goodness. Down there. I th think I don't need more dirt. Actually, I need to get the skin tone to come up through there. And I might also, yeah, on the ends of the fake eyelashes here. Make those even a smidge darker. Nostrils are just one. Yeah, I think, oh gosh. I'm going to go back over here to the asphaltum because I don't know how much of the preglaze actually worked its way into the nostrils right here. Certainly don't want those to be really dark. They're just, this is big enough was it one eighth size, right? It's big enough that that's going to end up being dark on its own. And I think, uh, see, I need to do something right here. Just going to have to stick my finger over there and clean up this one edge. That kind of, ah, that just got a bit wonky somehow. Don't know what happened there. Is there a Drax in the house? Hey, Drax, how you doing? And just like Armored Wolf says, be sure to give Drax a follow because Drax will be streaming later tonight. Drax will also be streaming Tuesday and Wednesday 
uh, unless there's a different plan for this week, but typically uh, Sunday through Wednesday, those are when uh, days when Drax is streaming. So Drax, I hope that uh, things are going good. Actually, how did your stream go last night? Sorry, I didn't get to join you. I was I was filming last night, and that was that was pretty intense filming, so I didn't get a chance to join you. So I hope that was a a fun session for you. All right, Queez, you have a good one, and uh, hopefully we see you tomorrow, Queez, because it's gonna be a we it's gonna be a very uh, special stream anniversary session for us tomorrow. Well, technically not stream anniversary. It's uh, what do we call it? Affiliate anniversary. <laughs> Which I mean, that just uh, that's that's like linguistic magic right there, affiliate versary. I mean, that just rolls right off the tongue. You you could see a balloon with that on it, right? Yeah, maybe not. And of course, we'll be painting. Uh... <laughs> when you stream long enough, do you eventually paint yourself? Because that's what we're painting. We're painting another Wapelius Spellbrush tomorrow night. Because I... Th Did we paint this one on stream? Or was this a YouTube Live? Boy, I think we might have painted this on stream. I, I don't know. And, and of course, uh, definitely say hi to this guy for me. The most dapper Penguins fan in all of Detroit right there. So thank you very much. Haha. <laughs> So yeah, the, there will be a little bit different freehand on there because that is actually a commission. So there's going to be a slightly different freehand on that than what we did on mine. Uh, not so much with the White Sox logo or the uh, the Wapelli. Well, we might still have the Wapelli's name on there. I think we might still have to have that. Uh, I'm going to go back to the Egyptian violet over here. And throw a little smidge more of the... Yeah, just a bit more of the violet in here, especially on this side. And I think my blending brush might be enough here. It's It's not the color mixing that I'm thinking about. It's uh, some of these brush strokes in here. And you see, I'm just kind of dead. Ah, look at that. Boy, just get rid of all those crazy brush strokes. I could see, literally, I could count the brush strokes in there. And this makes all that nasty stuff go away. So we don't see that anymore. Now, uh, Homuncula, uh, now I don't know. Can you get... Uh, uh, I know what Canada overseas and in Canada stuff. It's not always easy to get stuff from Dick Blick, but that's that's where we get it from is just from Dick Blick. Or I mean, just uh, you could go. To, I don't know if Williamsburg directly sells it. Oh, what's the thing that we have to ask Williams? Oh, the uh, Yin Min Blue. <laughs> that we actually, I guess we have to special request Yin Min Blue from uh from Williamsburg and what is it 14 bucks for a five milliliter tube or something like that needless to say you won't be seeing me do a lot of color charts with that oh yeah homuncula vet that's not going to be something now there's a few folks that apparently are very lucky and they have it in their local art stores that's something that you're probably going to have to get either from Dick Blick or just from Williamsburg directly. Because it, it's one of those kind of higher grade paints and that's not necessarily going to be in every single art store. Uh, you know what? I'm going to have to lighten this up too. Ah, that needs to be lighter. Of course, that's not light enough. I don't want to blow away all the shading there, but... That's looking a little too dark. Yep, we gotta soften that. Ah, that already helps. I'm gonna do a little bit more here. Yeah, that's already helping a lot there. Uh, Abadu, it's uh, it's the first new blue pigment that how many centuries? How many dozens of centuries? It's the first new blue pigment. Uh, but Bill, 
thinks that maybe, just maybe, Gamlin might be doing something, which would be nice. But it's the first new blue pigment, and it is so scarce and rare, whatever, that I do believe, how much, what is it, $100 for a 37 mil tube of Williamsburg right now? Yeah, that would be a hundred dollar tube of paint at thirty seven mil. And you thought quinacrinone golden brown was expensive at around sixty bucks a tube. Yeah, because uh just like Bill was saying, it's it's a couple hundred years. I mean if it's all this time it's been lapis lazuli and cobalt and that sort of stuff, that's where the blue has come from. And I'm not sure if this came from outer space or aliens or something like that, but it is a new blue pigment, and it's just so rare and so new. Now, who knows? Maybe 10 years from now, it'll just be more like conacrinone gold and brown and not quite so expensive. All right, something has to give here. I think we need... Ah, the light's not going up far enough there. That's what's going on. We'll fix that. We'll get to that right now. Boy, that that's almost kind of orangey there. I don't know if I want it quite that orangey. Oh, gee whiz. Yes, this has to go almost all the way up to here. But also not be quite so sharp of a line. We're almost doing a little bit of a scumbling technique here. Ah, oh, looky here's the altered man art. <laughs> so I got, I've literally got your alert probably three minutes before I went live myself. So sorry I didn't get to join you. But what you guys can do is you can follow altered man art because altered man art also uses the oils. Yes, go check out altered man art. Give him a follow because he loves his oils as well. Drax loves his oils. Brushcraft. And now Altered Man Art. To Altered Man Art, uh, let's see, well, the tree beard is done. So now did you go back to the, uh, I didn't even get the chance to see what your thing said because I was just about to go live. It's the oil, it's the oil gang. Well, Homunculive, I think we started calling it the Linseed Brotherhood. And it's a special handshake. And basically, if your hand is covered in oil paint, then you're definitely part of the Linseed Brotherhood. Hey, Francis, too. How are you doing? Now you went back to the Tomb Kings. Uh, Altered Man, if you got uh, <clears throat> if you got any early Instagram pics or something like that, feel free to throw a link there in the chat so people can see what you've been doing with the Tomb Kings. Oh, my goodness. i got to remember to do... Uh, Speaking of Tomb Kings, Lost Kingdom, Lost Kingdom, I have to, I still haven't had a chance to, well, I'm just going to wait till the, we'll wait till the 13th, which is tomorrow, I guess. Yes, the, the Oil Brotherhood, we all stick together, and anybody can be part of it, you just, just got to adhere to the gospel of the oil paints which is just have a whole bunch of fun and not work yourself to death. That's what the oil paint mantra is all about. Okay, th ah, boy, I can still see some of the Egyptian violet on the tops of her eyelashes there. Now I'm going to try, if possible... Uh, Altered Mana, it just uh, it has an elegance to it, doesn't it? It has just an elegance there. Hey, Rex. Gee whiz. How you doing, Rex? Nice to see you again. This is another case where the light had to be pulled a little bit further down. Yep. A little further down. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here. To, we'll respect the umber. Respect the umber once again and see if we can't. Maybe darken down the eye just a little bit, or the uh, iris here, a smidge, just a tiny bit there. Wanted to make it along the lines of the other one to the left. Rex has been spreading the oil gospel. Well, thank you so much for doing that, Rex. Thank you so much for spreading the word. P 
people have to know. I mean, we know that Big Acrylic is trying to, uh, you know, keep people away from all of our fun, but uh, the more of us are willing to spread the word like that, you know what it means. And I might just... I'm going to go even more with this on the other side of the I was right there bang that's it there we go all right that's more like it now maybe more of that on the lower lip here as well uh, so altered man hopefully is getting some follows there that is appreciated because Altered Marinot also does love his Lord of the Rings. And Altered Marinot also does some sculpting on his stream. He sculpted his own tree beard. So definitely go check that out. Okay, like we did before, we're just going to throw a couple of... There, so see that kind of, that brings that out. These get set back. Set back here too. Yin Min Blue, a mixture of indium oxide, manganese oxide, and yttrium oxide, and heat it in an oven. So, folks, uh, I think uh, someone get get right on those uh, those bits and pieces there, and we'll just start making our own Yin Min Blue. Yes, we'll make our own Yin Min Blue. It'll be the first miniature Yin Min Blue paint. And we'll we'll undercut their big prices. That's what we'll do. We'll undercut the price of the big guys. Yeah, a little. I think a little bit of shiny there too can't hurt either. Uh, it's the altered manner. I don't know if you had a chance to see the Saturday session or not, but we were painting our Rohan in flames. So these were our done lendings right here, and I don't know if I. I think I can get to one here. I think I can get to one of my doggies here. Ah, there it is. So these are the very first Oathmark miniatures that I painted so far. And these will be my Wolves of Isengard right here. So yeah, this is what we're working on Saturday. I think we painted up two of our Wolves, and I think we painted up five of these guys right here. So you can go back and catch this. See, there's, a, there's your Rohan building there, Rohan in Flames. These are the DEA agents of Middle-earth. Gandalf is terrified because they're there to take away all the ganja. They're they're cleaning up Middle Earth. First Rohan, then the Shire, and that'll be it. No more ganja. So altered man, I hope that uh, you're having lots of fun with the Tomb Kings. So just a little bit. Brighter highlight there, maybe even on this little symbol right here. Let's do that. Like so here. A bit more there. And right along this top edge. Not much. Don't want to go crazy with it. Just a little bit there. No more anywhere else. Then over here on the around the uh, clavicle there, we do have actually. It's interesting. It's got a little bit of a greenish look there. I think we'll get almost a well a dirty little magenta here. That's a little bit of our purple matter. We're mixing that with the brown matter. Or sorry, the, with the esfoltum. <laughs> There is such a thing as brown matter, and we use it an awful lot. That's why we kind of have that little bit of a misnomer. Oh, that's a, that's actually a neat, dark, brownish magenta. The asphaltum, also known as Drax Voltum, because Drax was the, the person to turn us on to that. He was the first one to discover it, so therefore it gets named for Drax. We'll darken that down, and then we're also going to soften that up with our blending brush here. Uh, let's see, the dragons are the secret weapons with the Balrog might be useful in helping burn the ganja. 
well, uh, yeah, this uh, bits right. All you're making me think of is uh, if if uh, smog or something was to set fire to all the ganja at once, that would be what do they call that thing? A secondary high or something like that, or a proximity high? Yeah, it'd be like the the biggest proximity high in the entire uh, entire age of Middle Earth. There, that's for sure. Uh, I'm doing okay. It was not the greatest day. I have performed better than no performance. A couple of painters encouraged me today. Greatly appreciate that from your audience. Yeah, Altered Man Art, definitely. Uh, hopefully we can get you some more some more folks that join in on your sessions there. And uh, I know you like to have people in the audience to, to chat with and such to keep you company. Because we were talking about that on Saturday, I think uh, that was Grumdy. Actually, Grumdy, weren't you and I talking about that? That the notion that uh, if it was just me painting here, I would probably be painting 25, 30 percent faster. But then it would be really boring because it would just be me and the 2,000 voices in my head that keep telling me to do stuff. So that's probably less good. So that's it's always good to have that company. Uh, let's see, and we're going to take a little trip here to Moria. Speaking of Balrogs, speaking of Balrogs, so you would think, well, something like a Balrog would be scary, right? Yeah, the Smaug himself would flee if he was to catch sight of just one of these right here. Let me see, where's my? There they are. Smaug sees these guys. He's gone, baby. Jete moi, that says toss me. And of course, we love the mimes. Uh, and but, oh, yeah, you can see there's our, our pogo stick guy and there's our parasol guy right in the back there. Uh, yes, they have chef's hats, they have top hats and berets, striped shirts, and they have baguettes too. They will bop you over the head with their baguettes. And look at, look at Charles de Gaulle. Yeah, he only has two stars, but look at that mustache. Look at that mustache. And then, of course, look at what we've got here. Francois and Pierre. Not so big with the hitting and the tackling and all that kind of rough stuff, but they do love a fine Pinot Noir or maybe a Chablis. This was a challenge because all of these figures pretty much were metal because this was 2006, and we didn't have any plastic goblins anywhere. All we had was some metal Blood Bowl goblins. So we had to chop off parts of them, file down parts of them. It would be a little bit easier now because there's a, well, especially with all the 3D printing options. But yep, that is the Mimes of Moria. Ooh, Rexa got second in a Blood Bowl Greenskin painting competition. Ah, well, congratulations there, Rex. Uh, well, if you have any pictures of them, uh, feel free to throw a link there in the chat so people can see your award-winning green skins. This not going to be green skin. We're still trying to work out exactly what, how much light do we want to get in here. A smidge more there, even maybe a little more here. And that is mostly the Terra Rosa mixed with the Brilliant yellow pale at this point, just to make sure we have enough of this light color. Here. And you can see I'm kind of stippling it on there. It's not this. It's more this kind of a, almost a circular type of brush stroke. And again, relaxed. Forget this thumb, right? Hideous failure of evolution. Oh, and Drax, that uh, black spin out. Look at this. <laughs> look, doesn't it look like that? You can't see. There's like nothing. It just disappears. Now there, okay, yeah, there's a little bit of the light shining on the, the wet paint, but man, it just kind of disappears, doesn't it? Look at that. That's crazy. And, well, I think it's it's got to be the opacity, too. It has to be the opacity. Ooh, oh, my, yeah, see here? All right. This in here, that's still just pre-glaze sitting down in there. We have to, we got to do something down there. And I actually think this one would be helpful here. This is that color we were just messing around with. The magenta mixed with the Drax Fultum there. 
Yeah. So say we all. That's better. Ah, so oh, thank you so much, Rex. That uh, that's really appreciated. We're just gonna let that drop right there, cause we need some nutrients here. Ah, oh, thank you so much. There we go. Yeah, Nessie, there was a little bit. It's almost like there was a bit of a hole right there. Because we have all of the other more o o opaque stuff. And by opaque, just there was a little bit of white in there. And that gave it just enough opacity. So here, this is a little bit of our Egyptian violet mixed with some of the brilliant yellow pale. It kind of grays it down enough. Ah, that's more like it. Also, too, as I'm looking at my references, I might have to also darken this down just a smidge, too. Yep. Now, here. Boy, that light really goes far further back even than I... Much further back than I expected it to. Just keep looking. And multiple references are showing the same thing, so we'll do that. We'll do that here. Okay, that starts to make a little more sense now. Oh, let's see. Now, Altered Man, I'm clearly here to make painting a social activity. Yeah, Altered Man, it, uh, well, it, it, you look at all the people here that, you know, they're painting along, having, a, having some fun doing their own stuff sharing stuff that really makes it more fun for for everybody instead of kind of working in a vacuum because that's for the longest time that's basically what i was doing was literally painting in a vacuum that's that's all i did was just paint on my own 10 12 16 18 hours every single day seven days a week that's uh and again, that's why we had all of those voices in our head telling us to do stuff. Now, now we have the chat, which is better and, and certainly uh, less hazardous for all of humanity. That's for sure. Because this way we're not, uh, we're not doing stuff. We're just painting. Yeah, let's grab a couple of these shiny highlights here on this Little batch here, just a couple there, not a bunch, just a few. Maybe two more there, that's it. Let's see if I can get a couple along here as well. It's almost like a chain of highlights, almost as if we're we're doing something that's metal. Oh my goodness, here, how do we not get these yet? I thought those were looking very flat. Now they don't look flat. Now they've looked like they got this actual turn to them here. Uh, Francis, we just got these busts. Oh gosh, I think they just came in Friday, maybe. I the ones I know for sure. I've got the Kirk, Spock, well, obviously the Hohura and and McCoy. I don't know if I have Khan. Not sure if I have that one or not. Well, I'll catch you later, Deuce. You have a good one. And well, hopefully we see it tomorrow when we're we're coming back to Wapelius Spellbrush again. Tony, if you stream long enough, you end up painting yourself. Seriously, you do because you get paint all over yourself. I mean, yeah. Now we have used a little bit of the perline black, not quite so much as we did with our Dunn Lendings, which ironically enough, the perline black was pretty much a big part of that color scheme. Much to my surprise. I did not expect to just try that out and go, this is magic. It is, that is absolute magic. I mean, we were thinking about nicknaming it, what was it going to be? Oh, Indigo Green, but man, that might be insulting to our Perlene Black. Ah, uh, Nessie said we don't need it. 
We don't need a Nessie. Well, Nessie, it would just be, it's a very rare sighting. You never know. Some people might say it's just a stick floating in the water, but there might be Nessie sightings every so often. Actually, would, would it just be your paintbrush sticking out of your water cup? Would that be the Nessie? Is that is that the Nessie right there? It's just, just a brush that's sticking up out of the paint cup. That would be the Nessie. Now here, yeah. I think we need to get something lighter there too. Oh gosh, what do we do up uh, here? Look at that. That's 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 difficult. Where's our blending brush here? We'll just take that and we'll just uh, smooth all this out here. So I'm gonna take that little blob that we threw there, and we're just going to let all that mix in like so. Oh, there's actually some red in there too. This is this is why we don't do layers. Is really plop one color on there, and then just take this thing, mix it around. Look at all the shade. Look at all that shading and stuff. Yeah. Well, catch you later, Altered Man Art. Thank you so much for the raid and such. And folks, be sure to give Altered Man Art a follow. And Altered Man, will you still be painting the Tomb Kings uh, the rest of this week? I'm um, guess, or are you gonna, or are you gonna pop back to Middle Earth again? So just so that folks know what you might be doing there, I'm gonna just bring in a couple. Oh, looks like Kathy might be heading off to bed now. <laughs> Everyone says good night, and good night to the face dog, Sambo. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm going to take my, once again, the Spinel here. Ah, Lord of the Rings and Tomb Kings. That's, uh, well, let's see. If you're doing, actually, do you have any Candish forces there, Altered Man? I meant to ask. Uh, now that you bring up Tomb Kings, that brings up the subject of chariots. And then that brings up the subject, inevitably, of Cand and... Do you have any Candish forces? I'm going to maybe lighten this up a smidge more here. It's going to end up being almost like a grayish color here. This one too, yeah. Going back into the Asphaltum slash Terra Rosa slash Brilliant Yellow Pale to make that just a little lighter. Yeah, the, the eyebrows are looking a little heavy there. Not quite so heavy. Lighten those up a little bit. Ah, this Altered Man Art does have some candy stuff. Is it the... Is it the riders, chariots, infantry, or is it a little bit of each? Okay, I think we've carried that light as far as we have to. What about this side? Maybe a little this way too, and gee whiz. Okay, um, I'm again just looking at my references here, and as I see I'm gonna have to get a little more light down in this area here somehow. Not sure how that's going to happen, but we'll see. Don't want to make uh, too much there. Oh, let's see, you guys. Streams tomorrow. The Casket of Souls and some spirit hosts on the side. Ah, the Deal Casket of Souls. That was one of the first things that I think that I did for my Tomb Kings. That was what really set the theme for the army there was the casket of soul. all right that is doing it and i might just have to do the same on this side too which is weird it's in shadow but that seems to lighten up the whole thing here yeah gives it a little bit less of a dark look a little bit of green in there too And Alter Man wants to see on the way out a little bit of film noir. And again, you will see some of those pinks and such. Those are going to disappear. Also, the warm versus cool. 
on the uniform there, but again, look at the, you don't see the violets there around the eyes, that, that eye shadow, and again, no pink over here or red. We'll bring it back, and you also don't see the blue in the hair. When we bring this back, you will see, I can see the blue in the hair already, and you get to that little bit of rosiness that we've got in the cheek there. That kind of disappeared, but color goes somewhere. It must go everywhere, All right? So we did a little bit of that. I got the infantry and a chariot. Yeah, oh, altered man art. The the best option definitely is. This is the uh, fire forged. Their Mongolian infantry right here, or their Mo Mongolian cav. I mean, they're way better than the GW ones, and they're literally one fifth of the price, I think, thereabouts. So, or at least one quarter of the price, if not twenty percent. So, and, 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 of course, it's probably going to be more available in stock anyways, too, than GW, where 70% of the Lord of the Rings stuff you can't even get, even if you want it. I'm just going to lighten this up a smidge. Now that we lightened this up over here, boy, that made more of a difference than I thought. It just doesn't look quite so angry anymore. It might mean I need to lighten this up a smidge. I might do that. It, it's weird. It shows them almost being the same level of lightness, which is odd. You would think just structurally this would be a lighter point here, and the other point would be in shadow, but mm, for whatever reason, yeah, okay. This might too. Just that little bit there. Actually, what? Ah, see, it brings out. Now that, that starts to look round. Okay, that was good. That's all good. We'll bring in a little more of our lighter skin tone up in here again, just trying to separate. There we go. Some of the, the hair just needs some separation right there. So Altered Man, definitely the Mongolian riders there. Just They're so much easier to put together. There's an incredible amount of variety. Now, of course, the Candish riders themselves, they basically just get bows. And, and you'll have to pretty much model them that way, but so much nicer than those hideous old metal things. Do I need to? Yeah, there's a very distinct, even in the pictures I can see, there's a really distinct edge over here on the bottom lip. That wasn't just an artifact of sculpting. That's That's really there. little bit of a hazard in that we could emphasize it way too much. 